Let's have a rational response to this coronavirus thing. The CDC now says it's probably coming to the United States. We need to brace ourselves. I think that there are common sense, simple things that we can do, uh, and we need not panic. So check this out. Leave your comments. Share it with your friends. Subscribe to our channel and ding the bell. Let's have a reasonable, rational, common sense conversation about this whole coronavirus thing. The uh, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, just an hour or so ago, came out and said, brace yourself, Americans, brace yourself, this is coming. Dr. Nancy Messimer, the director of the National Center for Immunization and Respiratory Diseases at the Centers for Disease Control said, and I quote, it's not so much a question of if this will happen in this country anymore, but a question, excuse me, of when this will happen. She went on to say, we are asking the American public to prepare for the expectation that this might be bad. Now, this particular virus, this COVID-19 virus, uh, and it's got a few other names, but let's call it the Wuhan virus to make it simple, um, is part of the family of coronaviruses. The coronavirus A family of viruses are the common cold and all these rhinoviruses that we constantly get where you get a runny nose for a week or you're sneezing or you get a sore throat. I, they take dozens of different forms because there's literally hundreds of different variations on the coronavirus A's. And we get them and they're obnoxious and we recover from them just fine. Uh, and one of, the, one of the things that we know about coronavirus A is that immunity is not lasting. It's not like the measles where once you get it, you'll never get it again. We get it every single year. Sometimes we get it two or three times a year because we don't have lasting immunity. Now that's a concern about the coronavirus B family, which is what the Wuhan virus was part of, it's what SARS was part of, it's what MERS is, which is the, the disease that came out of camels that they're having problems with right now in Saudi Arabia and the Middle East, um, which is a, a, even more deadly than the, the Wuhan virus. But right now, so far, it seems to be limited to the Middle East. But you know, it may be that we don't develop immunity and that every year there's going to be the, the cold flu and, and uh, Wuhan virus season. So what do we do about this? How do we as individuals deal with it? Well, first of all, how do we as a country deal with it? I mean, so now we've got the president who told us that the way to deal with forest fires is to rake the forest. Uh, the way to fix the, the cathedral in France being on fire is to drop water bombs on it, which would have, of course, destroyed it. And uh, the way to stop a hurricane coming to the United States is to set off a nuclear bomb inside it. That guy just told us yesterday, don't worry, everything's good. And, uh, you know, uh, just be happy and keep the stock market going up. But the fact of the matter is that Italy has now locked down 50,000 people in 10 northern towns. Uh, the coronavirus cases outside of China have doubled every five and a half days since January. In the U.S., we were at 34 confirmed cases last week. We now have 53 confirmed cases. But where it gets really spooky is that uh, Rear Admiral Tim Zimmer, who was the senior director for global health security, the guy inside the White House in the National Security Council who was in charge of our response to, a, to an explosive uh, epidemic, he was fired in 2018 by Trump and never replaced. John Bolton didn't just remove Zimmer. He eliminated the position altogether, the entire National Security Council's Global Health Security Unit. It is gone. He also forced out, Bolton also forced, forced out Tom Bossert, a highly regarded expert, this is from the Shiro newsletter, um, uh, who was Zimmer's counterpart at the DHS, the Department of Homeland Security. So neither Foreign Policy Magazine reported it back in January that neither the NSC nor the DHS epidemic teams have been replaced. And, and Trump slashed funding for the C CDC's epidemic efforts. So we've got a real problem here. As I mentioned, the National Security Council's entire epidemic division was shut down by Donald Trump two years ago. It's still gone. The Human Health and Human Services and the division of the, of, of, uh, the Homeland, DHS, Department of Homeland Security, their divisions that deal with epidemic diseases have been shut down by Donald Trump and are still gone. Why? Well, because it's science stuff, you know, and Trump doesn't believe in science and, and it's liberal stuff. It's the government doing things while well, we should just rely on United Healthcare and, uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, bare pharmaceuticals to deal with all this stuff. We don't need no stinking government. 
uh, this this is uh, you know pretty breathtaking. Uh, Trump also tried to decimate funding for the U.S. Public Health Service. Uh, Congress pushed back on that. So what Trump is doing is refusing to allow them to hire people who re to replace people who have resigned or uh, or who have uh, aged out, who have retired. And there is uh, no clear chain of command for pandemic response in the White House any longer. And the ability to test for this coronavirus, that ability to test exists in three of the more than 100 public health labs across the country verified by the CDC. So basically, if somebody shows up with these symptoms, we don't really, at this moment, even have the mechanism to test for it. But the New York Times today sent out a, uh, or the New York Times published a statement by the Centers for Disease Control saying this is coming to the United States and we need to prepare ourselves. Uh, James Hamblin wrote a piece for The Atlantic uh, a couple of days ago, February 24th, I guess uh, yesterday, uh, headlined, you're likely to get the coronavirus. So what do we do? I mean, this is, this is probably going to end up being like the common cold, a virus that just kind of periodically sweeps around the world. And the, the number one thing, I mean, Louise and I had a long conversation with this and two of our kids, uh, one's a, a PA and the other's a, an, uh, an NP, uh, both of them primary health care providers. And, uh, you know, we've had this conversation with our kids as well who are on the front line. They're, they're the most likely to be exposed to this disease long before Louise and I are. And our consensus, and this is just my opinion, and I'm not a scientist, but this, I think this is common sense, is you do the same things that you do to try to avoid getting the flu and the common cold. You wash your hands regularly. You don't touch infected surfaces. You try to break the habit of, you know, touching your nose or picking your nose or sticking your fingers in your mouth or even touching your eyes without having first washed your hands because the virus gets on your hands just like the flu virus does, just like the common cold does. It gets on your hands from touching a contaminated surface, whether it's a doorknob or a, you know, a, 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 a button in an elevator or whatever it may be, public place. You wash your hands and try to get out of the habit of touching yourself in the face. But most importantly, get healthy. I mean, that's your best defense against the common cold. It's your best, which is a coronavirus. It's your best defense against the flu. I had the flu two weeks ago. I was on vacation with my family and we were down in, in Central and South America. And, uh, and we traveled there through Galveston and, and Texas was having uh, a flu epidemic at the time. And, and uh, all but I think two of us got the flu on that trip. And, you know, it lasted a day or two, and I had a little cough tickle in my, in my throat, and it went away. And then, you know, Sean had it when I got back. Louise got it after we got back. Uh, you know, but if you're healthy, you're fine. And that's the bottom line. So, you know, start paying attention to how you're eating and start eating a lot, you know, a lot of fruit and vegetables and a lot of diverse stuff and a lot of green things and a lot of things that have a lot of color in them to build up your, your body and your immune system. Start taking, start walking a mile or two every single day. Get your body in good shape so that physically you can deal with getting sick. Because the vast majority of people who get this Wuhan virus, just, you know, for them it's like a cold. It's one of the reasons why I suspect that the fatality rate is actually below the 2.3% that China's reporting. Because I'm guessing that probably half these cases are not even diagnosed. Because people just get very mild symptoms. Some people get no symptoms at all, but they can still spread the virus. So let's ramp down the hysteria here. And yeah, you know, if, if one, two, three percent of people are dying from it, that's a problem. Most of the people who are dying from it are people who are very, very young and, and have not yet developed immunity or very, very old and are falling apart to begin with. And which is the same thing. I mean, flu kills 35,000 people in the United States every year. Who does it kill? Mostly people who have compromised immune systems, people who are not in good health, people who are elderly. These are going to be the populations that this, that this virus is going to do the most damage to. So if you're in one of those populations, try to get yourself healthy. And then the other thing I would add is, uh, you know, let's all not panic and let's try to calm our neighbors and friends down not to panic. That said, Louise and I lived in Detroit in the 1970s. Uh, it's where our oldest daughter was born. 
uh, in, in uh, St. Mary's Hospital in Livonia. We lived in Westland, which is right next to Inkster, which is, you know, suburban Detroit. In fact, we lived right on the border, um, Inkster Road. And um, the era oil embargo had happened, and Nixon was president, and he had put into place wage and price controls and said you could only buy gasoline if your license plate ended with an odd number on, uh, you know, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and an even number every other day, uh, as I recall. And uh, the Teamsters went on strike to protest that. And living in Detroit, all of a sudden, you know, in response to the oil embargo and the Teamsters strike, the supermarkets in Detroit were emptied in about two or three days, just emptied. So, you know, I'm expecting that there, and, and we just heard this yesterday from Northern Italy, that in uh, two of these towns in Italy now, there's no food in any of the supermarkets. Now, they're going to restock. It's going to come back just like it did in Detroit. This is happening in China as well. But, you know, there's probably nothing wrong with having a couple of, a couple of weeks worth of, you know, canned beans in the, in the, you know, the, that you'll use anyway. You know, stock up on a little extra food but, uh, and toilet paper products and things like that. But, you know, let's not panic and let's not spread panic. Let's just be reasonable about this. Get in good, good physical health. Take the same care that you take to avoid the common cold and the flu virus, Sean's over here doing, yes, doing your exercises. I mean, I was, you know, this last week, I, 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 I flew from Los Angeles to San Francisco on a plane that was a connection plane for people coming from Asia into Los Angeles. I flew from San Francisco to Seattle on a plane that was a connecting plane for people coming from, from Asia into San Francisco. These are international airports. I flew from Seattle back here to Portland out of an airport that has lots of flights coming in from, from Asia, you know, where they're having this disease, particularly South Korea now. I mean, a lot of the flights from China have been cut down. What did I do? I washed my hands constantly. I was, I was very, very careful not to touch my face. And, uh, you know, one, and, and I had the, uh, some of those little uh, towelettes, you know, the, the things that, uh, that you use to, to, to disinfect your hands, you know, if you don't have soap. And, and I would use those to wipe down the, the arm rests on the airplane where I was sitting. Right? It's just, I mean, it's simple stuff. It's the stuff, you don't need to get hysterical or OCD about this. It's, it's probably coming. The CDC said today, it's probably coming. But let's be reasonable, okay? Let's just, let's take a deep breath.